ask please glorify yourself and let your name alone be exalted thank you our father in jesus mighty name we have prayed thank you very much god bless you hallelujah thank you very much pastor it's not often that i shed tears but as i was just please just forgive me I think it was 1990. Thank you very much. Just please bear with me. Please bear with me. It's 1990, University of Benin, final year brethren fellowship and I sat like many of you are sitting here this morning and I wondered what the future would look like I wondered if I would make it in the world I wondered if I would keep standing for Jesus I wondered if Everything they told us was true. That if we trust in him, that if we trust in him, that he will keep us. It's 29 years now. And I can say that the Lord is good. I didn't have anything. I didn't have connections. All I had was faith in him. That he could keep me. And you know, I wasn't even engaged. Some of us were engaged. And it looked as those of us who were not engaged will never get good wives anymore. Because, you know, they said we're going to the world. And the world is dangerous. But all manner of things happen in the world. And they said to us that we may not make it unless we hold on to Jesus. As I look back now, 21 years, 29 years plus after, thereabouts, I can say with confidence that the Lord is good. Um, I, who was a nobody, I've seen God do incredible things with me. And I've lived each day by faith. And I've accomplished today things that were beyond my imagination. I'm hoping that if I do not do any other thing today, I hope that I can convey to you, those of you who are going out, that if you will put your trust in the Lord, he would lead you. That if you would put your hope in him, your hopes will not be dashed. And that if you will not fall to the allure of the world, the world is tempting. <laughs> in my final year as I rededicated my life to Christ, forgive me please. As I dedicated my life to Christ, you know, and I wanted to now be straight. I remember a young lady came into my room and said to me that she would like to change in my room because there were people in her room. And I said to her, I don't get it. <laughs> As in, what am I? You know what I mean? And God delivered me from that. Went on to youth call. Thank you very much. Went on to youth call. And one day, you know, in the hostel where we're staying, 
Somebody came to me and said, oh, Susan, your friend is not feeling well. I was like pastor, you know, in that place. So I went to Susan's room. And there was Susan naked. And Susan was beautiful. In fact, when I walked out of Susan's room, I said to myself, now you are really born again. Because once upon a time, Susan fully clothed was a target. Are you getting it? But you know, and that's how life will tempt you. I remember once I was broke and I went to bid for a job. And the man said to me, Nigerian Port Authority, it was a 400,000 naira job. He said, can you make this job 11 million? We will take, I think, some million and I would go with about, you know, some million. And I said to him, no, I can't do that. And he said, why? I said, I'm a Christian. And he's like, big deal. Your boss is a Christian. We cut deals with him. And I said, no, I'm different. Are you getting me, guys? So the world is alluring. Allure, to allure means powerfully and mysteriously attractive and fascinating. It's almost like you are charmed. You'll be tempted. But if you remember that if the worm, if the fish knew that there was a hook inside the worm, will it take it? So when something looks attractive and they say to you, join us, forget about who you are, forget about where you are coming from, please remember this, that if you would wait on the Lord, if Jesus tarries 29 years from today, 30 years from today, they will invite you as they are inviting me today, and they will say to you, we are graduating some students. Please come and talk to them. If anybody had told me, 1990, University of Benin, that one day I will have the opportunity to address students and to tell a story of God's faithfulness, maybe I would have said, are you sure? So whatever else I do today, I hope that I can leave you with this that if you will trust the Lord indeed, and you will commit to live each day for him. You know, 29 years was made up of one day, one day, one day. Is that not so? So every day you wake up in the morning, say to yourself, I will say no to sin today. And after a while, you would have accumulated 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Praise the Lord. So let's come back to our theme. I was asked to speak on Thrive. Planted and built up in Jesus Christ. So I hope you understand. It, it was the motion was just too much. I went back to the 500 lecture theater, University of Benin, and I couldn't but be gracious to God that I'm the one standing here today, happily married, blessed with children who love the Lord to bits. All right, and, and I'm glad that I can come back and say to another set that is about to join the race that hey no matter what anybody tells you it is possible to run on the narrow road with jesus and still make it amen, amen. now our text is colossians chapter 2 and verse 7 rooted and built up in him established in the faith just as you were thought taught abounding in thanksgiving i'm reading from the english standard version all right now, what does it mean to thrive? It means to grow vigorously, to flourish. It means to gain in wealth or possessions, to prosper. It means to progress toward or realize a goal despite or because of circumstances. So for example, I am thriving in spite of the challenges in Nigeria. I was just sharing with Pastor, and I hope as time goes on, I can tell you a bit more. I have lovely, five lovely children. I have four girls and a young man. Now, my first daughter, if I were the young lady who was leading the worship, that's how my daughter also ministers. Um, when she was finishing her, her um, first degree, I said to her, 
as the Lord lives before whom I stand, you're going to go to America to go and do your master's and to be on scholarship. She looked at me funny, but you know, because I'm her dad, she kind of like used to it. And so one day I got an email in my junk mail. Please follow my story. My junk mail. And the guy said, he can help you to get admission abroad, blah, blah, blah. Ordinarily, I would just delete. But strangely enough, on that day, I sent him an email. I said, well, um, my daughter wants to read blah, 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 some funny contraption, you know, between environmental science and agriculture. So I said, go and look for a school for me. And I thought I was, you know, not long after, the guy sent me a list of schools. And then I said to him, go and look for a school that will give us scholarship. Then he goes and comes, goes and comes. And one day I get an email from him that he's gotten admission for her in a particular school. And they're asking me to show evidence of 15 million in my account for the last six months. That day was on Tuesday evening. I was on my way to church for digging deep. And I was to teach on faith. And I smiled. I said, Holy Ghost, here you go. If I had 15 million, would I be looking for scholarship? <laughs> so I, I said to the guy, I said, write back to them and tell them that I am doing Osusu. Explain what Osusu means. In other words, people contribute money and then this month you will carry. Next month you will carry. That I want to pay for her fees with the portion that is coming to me, which is not enough, which is why I'm asking for a scholarship. He says, sir, I said, send the message as I've dictated it. Two weeks later, sir, 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 what is it? They gave her scholarship. How much scholarship? 100%. What, how much? $30,000. As I speak, guess what? She's thinking of a PhD. She's going into the end of the first year of her scholarship somewhere in Texas. And you know, sometimes you have to pinch yourself to say, are you sure? My second daughter is coming back from London on Tuesday. She has not done NYSE. She's going to do it now. She's got a job. That trip to London was paid by the office, was an official trip. And she gets to London because the person she works with is based in London. And the guy says, would you like coming to work in London? And you know my daughter, she behaves like, I'm not, you know, she's like as if she was born in London. <laughs> Sometimes I ask her, where did you get your Ajebota from? Because I'm your father. And I know that I'm not Ajebota. <laughs> Are you getting it? So I will not be surprised if that child ends up in London. What am I saying to you? If you will walk with the Lord, you will thrive not minding whatever prevailing circumstance or situation you may find yourself. New Living Translation says, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him, then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. So how do you thrive? If you look at that scripture very well, number one, let your roots grow down into him. Number two, let your lives be built on him. If you do those two things, it says, then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. In other words, just like me, that was an overflow of thankfulness. I couldn't help it. Because I look back at my life, see where I'm coming from, and see what the Lord has made of me. I mean, that's it. I'm overflowing with thankfulness. Praise the Lord. So number one, it says, let your roots grow down into him. Let your roots. Meaning that it is your responsibility to allow your roots to grow into him. God is not going to make your roots grow into him by himself. It is you that would allow your roots to grow into him. You ask me and you say, but sir, how? Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17. So that Christ 
may dwell, Ephesians 3.17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, let's continue, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. How? So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. How do you grow, allow your roots to grow? By faith. And by the way, you remember what faith is. When you call the impossible, possible. How do you explain Osusu to an American university in all the seriousness that the world is carrying on their heads? And you get a $30,000 scholarship as a result. Only God. You know the funny thing? I preached in a church in, in the U.S. just before she entered year one. All right? And I said to them, I said, brethren, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, my daughter is in SS3, and we're believing God for her to go to the university. And I said to them, I said, as I speak to you now, I want her to study abroad, but um, I don't have the money. But if Jesus tarries, I will come back to you one day, and I will tell you that she schooled abroad, that she graduated, and on and on. Are you getting it? And so, that's how you live by faith. When you call those things that be not as though they were, you behave like your father. So how do you allow your roots to grow deep into him when you live by faith? You may be here now and the future is so uncertain. Okay? Maybe your father has lost his job. Maybe your mom has lost her job. God forbid, maybe they've passed on. Maybe there's a divorce in your family. Maybe there's one calamity or the other and you're beginning to wonder, what hope do I have? You have hope, my dear. And that hope will come by faith as you repose your confidence in him. How do you allow your faith to grow? Colossians chapter 1 verse 23. Colossians 1 23. If indeed you continue in the faith. You see, up until this moment now, you are in the faith. Are you getting it? When you guys graduate and you get to that place called the world. Yes? Now the challenge is Will you continue? If indeed you continue in faith, stable, steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. So, if you continue in faith, and remember this, faith is one day at a time with Jesus. Do you get it? So you were toasted by an allergy on Monday and you said no. You were toasted by your boss on Tuesday and you said no. Are you getting it? You were asked to join the cult on Wednesday and you said no. Are you following me? After some time, you will discover that your saying no appropriately and yes appropriately has gotten you to the place where 21, 29 years after, you can stand before a group of young people and say to them, God is faithful. You know that scripture says, not shifting from the hope of the gospel. What does it mean to shift? You know, if you say, please shift a little, what will you do? You move a bit. Is that not so? Shift. Shift this way, shift that way. You move a little. Don't give the room, don't give a little room to the devil. Are you following me? Don't do what? Occupy your place. Don't give a little room to the devil. Now, I wish I could promise you that you have a problem free future. Unfortunately, that will be a lie. Trials will come, you will suffer loss, you may even fail sometimes. But if you do not shift from the hope of the gospel, at the end, it will work out for your good. As the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. In this 29 years that I'm talking to you about, at the beginning, I had a great job. London today, Milan tomorrow. 
All right? I was flying all over the world. I had so much money. I left that job, went to another one. You know, official car, official this, official that. I left that job, and then life happened. Started a business. Barely three months into the business, there was a thunder strike. And every equipment that we bought was fried. And for the next four or five years, all I was doing was paying debt. Many nights, my wife would say to me, are you sure? And I would say to her, woman, God has never failed. He will not start with us. Thank God for a good wife. Many times, you know those days when my wife would cook, the meat was the crayfish on top, rice and oil. And on a good day, there would be an egg on top. There was a particular time one of my children could not go to school because we couldn't afford to pay school fees. But through it all, I was pastoring the church and they had no idea what I was going through. No idea. If anybody had told them that your pastor was sitting on fire, they would say he's a liar. Can he be sitting on fire and his face is just straight? Are you getting it? But I used to say to my wife, I said, woman, go and read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. God has never failed. And he cannot start with us. Even if we are even if my great-grandfather used to eat human heart, I said to her, the people that killed Jesus, they are the most prosperous in the world. Yes or no? The Jews, they killed him and they said what? Let his blood be on our head. Is that not the worst crime? They are the richest. So I said, don't worry yourself. We'll come out of this place. And it looked like it was a long night. But you know what? If you don't shift, the word of God says, weeping may endure for what? But what comes in the morning? Aha. Aha. So you stay. You maintain. Are you getting it? So trials will come. Temptation will come. You will suffer loss. But if you do not shift, at the end, you will triumph. If you do not shift. And the second thing it says, let your lives be built on him. So you start off by faith. You start off by continuing in faith. You start off by not shifting. And then he says, let your lives be built on him. Let me ask you a question. Imagine that when they did the foundation of this hall, and it was German floor, which is the strongest. Is that not so? And they stopped there. Will you worship here? Will you? No, you won't. So, in addition to the foundation, what must you do? You must build on that foundation. Are you getting it? So as it were, P3 has given you a solid foundation in Christ. As you go out, you must be mindful that you build on it. You must be mindful how you build on it. You know, when I drove into this place, you know what I saw? I saw class. I saw excellence. Are you getting it? And I, 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 I'm not surprised anyway because I know your pastor. All right, but from the gate, you can see that whoever is here knows what it's about. I, are you following me? It's clear that they are not confused. They are, you know, they are clear what they are doing. All right? And so, just like you've built a beautiful auditorium, so also, I believe, they have tried to lay a foundation for you. So, having built a foundation, now you must go on to build a structure that will stand. Acts chapter 20 and verse 23. It says, And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. To the word of his grace. My dear brothers and sisters, you can never outlive or outgrow the word of God. You know, I've read the Bible through a couple of times. I started another one again in January. And it's amazing that the same scripture that I've read before, when I come again to that scripture, is like as if I've never been there before. Has it happened to you like that? Yes. So all through your life, you must constantly, you know, let me tell you the way it works. 
there's Bible reading for the sake of I want to come and preach. Hello? There's Bible reading because I have a problem. I'm looking for a solution. So you must have Bible reading because I want to come and preach. You must have Bible reading because I'm looking for an answer to a problem. But apart from those two, you must have Bible reading because Bible is my oxygen. Are you getting me? So you just wake up and you read. Just read. When you finish, you start again. When you finish, you start again. And you know what I say to myself one of these days? I will just be reading like that and that's how we go. When you finish, get to uh, Revelation. Don't worry. In fact, there was one particular one took me three years to finish, but I didn't quarrel. It's, you know, not, it's, not, it's not a race. Are you getting me? This is, you know, it's like, I cannot say that let me breathe all the oxygen I need for today. Is it possible? No. So, sometimes I will leave what I'm doing. I will go and start a book of Proverbs. Read it over many, many times. I will come back again, continue from where I left off. So then I will leave that place. I will go and read New Testament over and over. I will leave it there. I will come back again. Do you get it? I have that daily, daily. You know, take two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the evening. So you must continue in the word of God. Continue in the word of God. Don't only read Bible because you want to come and preach. Don't read Bible because you are looking for prayer points. Only. No. When you finish all those things, read it because it is your oxygen. Okay? Now, you remember Joshua? Just like you. Joshua was at a transition point. You see, it's easy for some of you here now. Pastor DG has been your, you know, pastor, 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 very soon you'll be so far away time difference, you can't call him when you need to call him. That's how it was with Joshua. You know, Moses was there. So Joshua kind of knew that no matter what, Moses was, it's like many of us in Redeem under the Jew. You know, we just believe that that is there. Many of us have not found God for ourselves, even pastors. We just hide. It means whether I fast or I don't, that the Jew I know has fasted. So when I get to the camp, something will happen. One day, daddy will leave. Mmm, it's a reality. So Moses left. Are you getting it? Just like you, you're about to leave this cocoon. You know it's a cocoon for you. Uh, they carry you from your school to church. Have you? And then after church, they carry you back, hand you over to the potter. Say, potter, she's back, oh. he's back, oh. and then after school, is that not true? And you feel exhaled. I don't know how you do it here, but you know very soon, you're going to go to that place they call the world. If you decide at 1 a.m. that you want to go out, nobody will stop you. I hope you know that. And you know, there will be no room made to say, let us pray. You may not have someone to say, let's, it's like my daughter now, where she is, she's in hell, literally. That place, no church. She eventually found a church, they don't speak in tongues. That's how bad the place is. Many times she would dream and she's in warfare. Witchcraft, you know, in America, you won't believe. I'm telling you. So I said to her, I said, God has prepared you. All your years in fellowship, it is now you will know whether you are really a Christian or not. And little by little, American girls are coming to her and pouring out their life stories without her requesting. She went for, uh, what do you call that thing? When you go and study together, what do you call it? To read together. Uh, what do you call it? Study group. And instead of going to study agriculture or environment, the girl is pouring out her life. Are you getting it? So I told my daughter, I said, now you are seeing why God trained you. I said, here now, you can't afford to slack up. You must be on your toes. You must wake up Nobody else there. Only you will form a band. And you worship the Lord. And you will pray. And you will draw. You know, and I thank God for her life. Just yesterday, she called us and was telling us what God told her about our house. I said, very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are you following me? So, you must do what? So, like Moses, like Joshua, Moses was gone. And it was not time for Joshua to strike out his own path in life. And so God gave him counsel. Counsel that will be valuable for you this morning. 
Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1. After the death of Moses, upon the graduation from Babcock and from P3, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, as he said to you this morning, Moses, my servant, is dead. Verse 2. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, into the land that I'm giving them to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I've given to you, just as I promised Moses. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, the great sea toward the going down on the, of the sun shall be your No man, take note, no man shall be able to stand before you all days of your life. Just as I was with you at P3, so I will be with you all the way. Amen. Amen. He said, I will not leave you or forsake you. He said, but be what? Be strong and courageous. Just like my daughter is not having to stand all alone. Are you getting it? She said to me, she said, Daddy, you know, it's interesting that God took me from my comfort zone and is showing me another side of him. So without them speaking in tongues, the way we do, yet God is doing wonders in that church where she worships, a Pentecostal church. Are you getting it? God is, so she's like, you know how we think that the side of God that we, are, that we have seen is the only... So some of you, you will leave this place, you will move to a place where maybe their style of worship will be different. In fact, can I tell you something? You are not likely to see a P3 anywhere else again. Hello. Is that clear? It's reality. You are not likely to see... In fact... In a typical redeemed church, if you shout the way you are, just oh, what's wrong with this? <laughs> are you getting oh, what's wrong with this one? Quiet, quiet, please, in Jesus' name, Jesus, in Jesus' name. So you must be able to separate the core from the ephesi. Are you getting it? You may not have this environment where you are all on the same direction, going to the same place, etc., etc. No. But wherever you find yourself, look for God. And once you find God, then settle in for another adventure. Are you hearing me? So my daughter says to me, Daddy, it's amazing. They don't speak in tongues in this place, but yet still, I see God moving. And she said to me, I'm discovering God anew. Alright? So, Verse 7, only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from me to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. Then verse 8, this book, this book, this book, this book, it shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate on it. That drama was made in heaven. Can we clap for those guys? <laughs> Left to me, I should have just come to share the grace after them. This book shall not depart from your mouth. You know what that means? You must learn to speak the word. My little boy is about four, turning going on five. So he has a seven year old that he calls his brother. So that one came to me and said, I kiss daddy. I kiss said he doesn't mind losing. That is okay. He will lose. He doesn't mind. Ah. So I let them finish their play. So the next day, I called my son. Now we have a chant. My name is IK. Jesus loves me. I'm a winner. I'm the first and not the last. What am I doing? This book shall not depart out of your mouth. So when I say to him, my name is, he will shout, I-K. Jesus loves me. I'm a winner. I am the first. I'm not the last. So now he calls me, daddy, I won. I said, that's my boy. <laughs> what I did with I-K, you must do with yourself until you see Jesus. Are you getting it? It's a battle. Sometimes you look at your life and the devil will say, now tell me. Is there anything? Have you achieved anything? You must say to him, Satan, keep quiet. And then you begin to speak forth that which you want the Lord to do. So, the book of the law. 
So what did God say to Joshua in summary? Don't be afraid. Be bold and courageous. God will be with you. You are more than a conqueror. Do not shift ground. And then he says what? Keep the book ever open to guide you. So if you allow your roots to grow down into him, and you proceed to build, making his word your friend, then two things will happen to you. You will continue to grow in him, number one. You will be filled with all thankfulness and gratitude, and then you begin to thrive. So, the pathway to thriving is to live by faith, is to befriend his word, is to make up your mind not to shift, no matter what. And believe me, you will be tempted. You will be tempted. Now, I ask a question. What can stop you? You know, when we were in school those days, and we are doing a 1,500 meters race. You do that in your school? You know at the beginning the place is jam-packed. Yes or no? Everybody's there. After the first lap, what happens? By the second lap, what happens? In fact, by the, I think, is how many laps is it? Is it four or five? Whatever. By the last lap, you can count on one hand those who are left. Are you getting it? Unfortunately, that's exactly the same thing that happens with the Christian race. But you make up your mind that if there will be one person left standing, I will be that person. That's what I told the Lord. I said, Lord, I will stand. No matter what it takes, I will keep standing. So what can stop you if you don't take root in him or if you don't continue in him? If you allow the world to entice you away, as happened with somebody called Demas, Colossians chapter 4 and verse 14. This is the beginning of the story of Demas. Look, the beloved physician greets you as does Demas. Is that not so? In other words, Demas was a brother. He was a bona fide member of the fellowship. Now go to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Christians has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Thessalonica was like the happening place. You know, it was the, the place that had everything going. And Demas loved the world and went that way. Many years ago, I read the story of a young lady who was a pastor's daughter, somewhere in Europe. After a while, she just decided she's not serving God again. And the parents did everything they knew. After a while, they stopped and just started praying. They were just praying for her, praying for her, praying for her, praying for her, praying for her. Then something happened. Suddenly, the young lady came back and said, she's back. So the parents, out of curiosity, asked her and said, what happened to you? She said she had a dream. That in that dream, she saw two cities. One city was bright and beautiful, just there. He said another city was beautiful, full of, you know, it's like, you know, um, um, what's the word? Glittering. So naturally, she moved towards the glittering city. She said, but when she got into that city, alas, she found out that instead of the glitter that she saw, it was rotten, it was dead, it was horrible. And so when she woke up, it was clear to her what the Lord was saying to her. So she repented and came back to Christ. So you know, Tawu Allah, Allah is your bank, Stambik, the one that signs. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, very good. Oh, sorry. Okay. There's a guy, Tawu, big boy in Stambik. I was his pastor at one time. So he was looking for work. So it was one company had approached him, you know. So he came, he discussed it with me. I, I said, I have my, but let's pray about it. Later on, he came and said, Pastor, I had a dream. I said, what was the dream? He said that, he saw that company, and it was like a showroom. Beautiful cars lined out. He said, but when he went in, in no time, everything shattered. So he took the stambic job and didn't take that job. 
not long after that company went under bankruptcy. What am I saying to you? It's not all that glitters that is gold. And something else I want to leave you with is what I call the spirit of contentment. Can I say this to you? You will never have everything. So you must be satisfied with whatever the Lord gives to you. If you have one car, be grateful to God. Why? Because you will find somebody that has two. If you get a scholarship, you may find somebody that has a scholarship that comes with a job. Are you getting it? If you get married, you may find somebody whose uh, honeymoon was in the place you would have loved to go, but you couldn't afford it. So no matter what you attain in life, if you look closely, there will be somebody or someone else that has that which is a bit more than what you have. But you must make up your minds that no matter what, no matter what, you will have faith in God, you will not shift ground, you will befriend his word. My time is almost running out and I want to pray with you. Can I ask you for a moment to close your eyes as you are seated and think about your life even till this moment and I want you to, those particulars of you who are living, I want you to make a vow to the Lord and say to him, oh by the way, another story comes to mind. We have this place we call the, you know, behind the staircase, before you pray, behind the staircase that leads to the auditorium in, in University of Benin then. So it was an evening, just as we're part of our rounding up ceremonies. So we had this prayer meeting and there was this brother so all of us were believers. And then he asked a question. He said, if you would like to give your life all and all to Jesus. I said, but we're already born again. What are you talking about again? He said, no. It means no matter what, step forward. Ah. I considered it. I said, but I've already given my... Does it mean now I will go and be a pastor in one funny, rickety place? Or does it mean now that they will not give me one ugly woman to marry? Those are the things that were in my head, you know? Does it mean now that, you know, I cannot do anything I want to? But after a while, I said, well, whatever it means, if that is what God wants for me, then that is what I want. So I stepped forward. I was afraid. There were others that didn't move. Are you with me? Today, today, everything I thought I was going to miss if I gave Christ all, I've got all of it. I don't know what I would have missed. Are you getting it? So I want you to spend a moment and think about your life. And then those of you who are about leaving, I want you to talk to the Lord very briefly and say, Lord, even if it means my dying, I will serve you. That's the only prayer I want you to pray this morning. If you would pray that prayer a minute, then you can leave the rest for Jesus. Say to him, Lord, even if it means my dying, I will serve you. You're making a vow. Those of you who are living, even if it means my dying, I will serve you. And for the rest of us, you may be here and we think or we believe that you are a born again Christian. But as you are here seated, in your heart, your heart is saying to you, but yet you don't know him. I want you to raise your right hand so I can pray with you. You want to make a decision today to say, from this day, I decide to serve Jesus. Thank you very much, my dear. Any other person? I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Never done so before. I have been behaving like a Christian, but my heart says to me today, I'm not born again yet. Raise up your right hand. I want to pray with you wherever you are. As your hand is raised up, come, come and join me here. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Come, I want to pray with you. Come. Step up from where you are. Please make, make room for them. And just come. Let's pray together. You lifted up your hand. It's your decision. It's your come forward quickly. Just come. As you come, go on your knees and talk to Jesus. I want to pray with you. Oh, Father. Come quickly. Come. 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 And let's pray together. Go on your knees and talk to him. Just go on your knees. Say, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Go and talk to him. Say, Lord, here I am. Save my soul. Come quickly, come quickly, come. Go on your knees and talk to him. And say, Lord, I want you to save my soul. 
I want to give my life to you, Lord, from today. Take it. Take my life. Do with it as you will. Let it be yours. Come quickly. Come, come, come. Just go on your knees and talk to him. Go on your knees and talk to him. Say, Lord, I surrender my life. I surrender my life. I surrender my life. There's no life outside of Jesus. There's no life worth living outside of Jesus. Go on. Say, Lord, I surrender my life. I surrender it, Lord. Come quickly if you are still there. Come quickly. I want to pray with you. Come. Come so that you too, in 30 years from today, you can stand and say the Lord has been good to me. Come. Come from wherever you are. Come. The Lord Jesus is calling to you. Come. Come, my brother. Come, my sister. I made this decision as a student just like you. I didn't know what the future held, but all I knew was that the one that holds the future is the one that was about to take over my life. Come quickly. Come. Come, go on your knees and talk to Jesus. Say, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Help me. Take my life. Take my life, Lord. Take my life. Tell him to take your life. Tell him you own me now, Lord. Take my life. I don't know what problems. Maybe your home. Maybe your parents are Adventists. Maybe they are Muslims. I don't know, but God will handle your life. God will handle your life. God will handle your life. Oh Lord, come. Any one more person there before I pray? Just one person I want to wait for. There's a struggle in your heart. You are wondering, should I or should I not? You may never get this chance again. Come. Come. I'm waiting for one person and then I will pray. Where's that one person I'm waiting for? Come. There's a struggle on the inside. Come quickly. Come. Don't worry what we think. Don't worry. Thank you very much. Come. Thank you very much. Come. Come, my brother. Come. It is for you that Jesus died. Thank you very much. Come, my brother. Come. Please make way for them. Come. 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 I made this decision when I was about your age. And then today I'm in my 50s. And the Lord has never failed me. He has never. He has blessed me with a wonderful wife. Blessed me with wonderful children. I'm, I'm, I'm active in ministry. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you. I'm active in ministry. I couldn't ask for another life. The Lord has been good. I want to pray now. 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 Father, behold this your children kneeling in front of you. You saved my soul round about this age, Lord. And you have kept me till this very moment. Through all the challenges of life. O oh God of the heavens and the earth. You that saved my soul and has kept me till this day. I commit these ones unto you, my Father. Please save their souls, my Lord. Put their names in the book of life. And O oh God of the heavens and the earth, I plead with you, Lord, on that day when the roll shall be called up yonder, none of these ones will be found wanting in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Just rise to your feet. We're going to pray one more prayer and then I'll be out of here. Where are they going? Where are they taking them to? Please just go with my sister to my left. Thank you. Let's clap for Jesus as they go. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's around this age, I made this decision many, many years ago now. And the Lord has kept me. He's been faithful. Let's keep clapping for Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's keep clapping. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, please give me just two minutes more. I know my time is up now. Two minutes, sir, please. Let's keep clapping until they leave. Let's keep clapping. Let's keep clapping. Let's keep clapping. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we're going to stretch our faith. Particularly, where are those that are living? This is your, these of you who, all right, just wave to me. Great, great, great. We're going to stretch our faith. It's interesting because my third daughter is right. So right now we're at the praying stage. You know, everything I have in life, I have gotten purely by faith. All right? I don't have a, a rich father, a rich mother. I don't have any fat salary. But I don't lack anything. Are <laughs> you getting it? If I've traveled 10 times, 8 of those 10 was paid for. So I've come to realize that God is my paymaster. Alright? So I am believing God for scholarship for my second daughter. Um, 
So as many of you as are trusting God, they'd like to have a scholarship. Let's join our faith together and pray. All right? I'd like you to stand to your feet. Whoever here wants a scholarship, just stand to your faith. Stand to your feet. We're going to stretch our faith. We're going to stretch our faith. Hallelujah. We're going to stretch our faith. You know, God does incredible things. Funny enough, as at the time I was sharing this test with a friend of mine, he was saying to me that he had just come from a place where somebody's child got a scholarship to Yale. Another person's child got a scholarship to Luke. Another person, yo! I'm like, really? So, it's a scholarship season. Now, remember, the just shall live by faith. When I told that man on Tuesday on my way to church that he should describe Osusu, someone was telling me, are you not crazy? What is Osusu to a white man does? I said, well, at this stage, I have nothing to lose. All they will say is what? No. And instead of a no, we got a $30,000 scholarship. And now she's thinking of a PhD. <laughs> are you getting it? Of course, I told her, I said, you know, it has to be scholarship. She said, yes, daddy, I know. I said, no problem. Lift up your right hand. Father, in the name that is above every other name, you have done it before. Done it for me. Done it for multitudes. You can do it again, Father. Lord, I pray, as many of these your children as have faith to receive it, I release scholarships in the name of Jesus. In the most unlikely manner, <laughs> once upon a time, we're in church, Thanksgiving Sunday, and I said to them, whoever will dance the most will get a scholarship. And I forgot it there. A couple of months later, a, later, a young lady came up and said, that day when pastor said it, I began to dance and dance and dance. Behold, I just got a scholarship for so and so and so. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree upon each and every life here that Lord, as many of us as have the faith to see into the invisible realm, we receive that scholarship now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, one by one, they will be telling their pastor, pastor, you won't believe it. Amen. They had closed. They said, sorry, you are late. And then miraculously, I got a letter. Amen. A young man, let me finish with this was a drummer for a friend in Port Harcourt. But he had an eye for music. And so my friend said to him, go and look for a school in America. And the boy said, Pastor, where will I get the money from? And the pastor said, you start the search first. So the boy found a school in America, and he wrote to them. And they replied him, and they gave him the school fees. He said, Pastor, see, I told you, this is the school fees. And the pastor said, you pray. Shortly after, the boy gets a, is it from I, what they call the one they give for, for you for a visa interview? Uh, I, there's a form, I can't even remember, my daughter got it. There's a form they give you that says you have paid school fees. Are you with me? So they sent that form to this young man. He said, Pastor, Pastor, I've not paid. See the other, Pastor, keep quiet, go to the embassy. So the boy got to the embassy, they gave him a visa. When he gets to the school in America, he says to them, I didn't pay you. They said, oh, we made a mistake. But you know what? Don't tell anybody. Let's arrange. We'll get you a job. You'll be schooling and you'll be paying us the money little by little. Are you hearing me, sir? Does that make sense? The school said, shh. Don't tell anybody we made a mistake. But since you are here, we'll arrange it. So we'll get you a job. You'll be schooling and then you'll be paying and you know, the thing about America, once you enter America and your hair is screwed up the right way, you are made. Are you following me? So lift up that right hand. Father, I ask, because you are the miracle walking God, a miracle of scholarships, let it be released upon this assembly. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, in Europe, in America, Amen. in Australia, in Canada, yes. even in Nigeria. Amen. Let there be a release of scholarships. Amen. Let there be a release of scholarships Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now Lord, I want to pray for those of your children who are stepping out. My Father and my God, I commit each and every one of them unto you. 
That scripture says, faithful is he who has begun a good work, who is able to complete it. And it says, God is able to keep to that very day everything that is committed unto his hands. I commit these ones unto your hands, my Father. Amen. Holy Ghost, you have kept me. You have kept millions of others. You have kept billions of others through the ages. You will keep these ones too. Amen. Lord, you will keep these ones too. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my Father. You, In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. If you have been blessed, can you?